Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. We are back, second episode of the year. Still feeling well. Haven't actually gotten sick yet, thank God. People have been getting sick around me. I don't know if I told you this, but people have been getting sick around me. Not feeling good around me. People have been sounding sick, feeling sick, not coming in sick, and I have been dodging it the entire time. I don't know what it is, what it could be. I'm just going to call it lucky at the moment because there's nothing that I can pinpoint that would make me think that, you know, How could I possibly not get sick? I used to be a person back then when I wasn't taking care of myself that I would most likely get sick. If someone was sick around me, near me, next to me, I might end up getting sick. That was always a fear for me. And I would usually get sick. If someone was sick at home, I would end up coughing. I would end up being not feeling well. You know, maybe that same day, the next day, whatever, I wouldn't be feeling well. And I would be furious about it because it would be kind of my fault, but also at the same time, the person that got me sick's fault. But at the moment, nothing's happened. And I've been crystal clear, been been going clear through this new year without being sick and people have been getting sick. Like I said before, you can hear it in their throat, and you're like, oh, boy, get away from me. I don't want to I don't want to be near you. You know, one of my coworkers called in sick um, last week, and I thought to myself, well, I saw you the day before, and you weren't sick. And I'm thinking to myself, like, oh, no, I hope, I really, really hope that I don't get sick. A few days passed, nothing happened to me. I was fine. I'm like, oh, thank God. I dodged a bullet, potentially. Now, I'm not an expert of how fast a disease or a virus can accumulate in a person's body and then actually make you sick, you know. But I feel like I'm in the clear. That I'm no, I'm no longer in, like, the danger zone of being infected or being contagious, if I may add. I think I'm in the clear for that, which is always a good thing. You know, you never want, you know, the looming fear of a possibility of you being sick. That would just not be something that you would want it to happen to you, to happen to anybody, right? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants anything to derail their day, week, whatever it may be. No one wants derailment. In fact... That is also a goal that I think that I could, you know, strive for the best that I uh, that I possibly can in this new year is not having anything derail your plans um expectations anything like that. You know, just keep, stay focused like I said before, locking in in this new year. Got to stay locked in can't really have any hiccups in the year or anything that, you know, occurs that might derail anything because that's not something that's um, well accepted by us. We always want everything to go to plan. Everything's got to go to plan. There's nothing worse than having plans and them falling through. Unless you truly don't care about the plans. But let's say you do. Picture this. You care about your plans and what you're going to do with friends, family, whatever it may be. And then something comes along and derails that entire thing. And now what? Now your day's ruined. Now your entire night is ruined. 
my favorite thing of all time, or one of my favorite things to laugh at, to actually just be like, well, you know, maybe not laugh at, but, you know, kind of felt that that was funny at the time, was those memes when, you know, it would be in, like, the text, like, when your friends have to cancel plans and the person in the meme is, like, joyful and cheering. Those were pretty funny. Even though that was never really me. I usually like my plans. But I would totally understand if you're coming from a position where you might be lumped into something, you might be dragged into something that, you know, you don't really want to do, you don't necessarily want to be want to partake in, and something like that, you know, actually does happen. Like, it does get canceled because of something. That's got to be an all-time feel. Now, that never really happens to me because I'm usually always, you know, on, not, not like, uh, I'm usually always um, reliable when it comes to plans. Like, if, if somebody wants to chill out, if somebody wants to hang or have dinner or something like that, I'm usually there. I'm not a flake. I'm not somebody who's going to be like, um, sorry, can't, can't make it, ain't going to happen, not coming, whatever. I am usually the person to be like, yes, or I have no plans. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm down. There really isn't anything out there that I'm going to be like, "Mm, nah, I'm busy. I wish. Could you imagine that though? There's some, you know, scenarios what I would, I would like to say, nah, I can't, I'm busy. But my personality does not allow me to do that. It truly does not allow me to tell a fib that way. I've tried many times. Like I've said before, lying for me is very, very, very hard. It's extremely hard. Like when somebody asks me or texts me if they want to do something that day or maybe in a week and I really don't want to do it. Like I absolutely don't want to do whatever this person asks me to do. I will not say I'm going to be out of town. I will not say I'm actually going to this person's house. I would not say I'm actually actually I got to go do this. Or I got to run some errands. I cannot do it. I am unable to do it. I would just say, "Nah, I don't want to." And that's it. And you know what? That normally doesn't get a very good response from the people asking me to come do stuff. That usually respond that that response is usually met with you suck. Why not? Come on. And you know what? That actually is probably why people lie. Because when they lie and say they got to do something. Or they have to do this. Or they can't get out of this. Or that. It kind of halts people questioning. And begging you to come and do the thing that they wanted you to come and do. Now, I usually fend it off with courage and just say, I stick to my guns like, nah, I ain't going to do that. I don't want to do that. That ain't for me. Ciao, Bella. You know, so I, I, I usually do that. And it's usually something that I feel like is quite the struggle because nobody really wants to keep denying someone um, their request for that long. But I think at the end of the day, it is so much better to do that than to lie. I really don't think that lying, for one, is a good thing. It's not. I think it's it's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not lie to your friends. You shouldn't do it, right? You shouldn't do it. it. It doesn't make you feel good. It makes me feel bad. Now, of course, I feel bad, too, when I say that I don't want to partake in the um, these activities with who, whomever asked me, but at least I'm not lying. At least I'm not um, telling you a story and giving you false information and breaking my trust with you by telling a lie. 
Now, of course, that doesn't feel good to have to reject somebody, like reject their plans or their idea, or just say, nah, that sounds stupid. But I do think that it's better than lying. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just how I think of things. That lying is just not a good thing. It makes me sick to my stomach. That's why I can't do it. That's why I never do it. You know? People ask me, you know? I get asked all the time by my buddies. Hey, come play. Get online. Let's play some COD. Let's play this. Let's play that. And I'll either say yes or no. Or like, okay, I'll be there. Or can't tonight. Or maybe. We usually when I hit them with a maybe, it's indefinitely a maybe. And there's a possibility. There's like a tiny possibility. Not 100% sure if it's going to happen, but there is a possibility. But I always leave it open. You know, if I do say maybe, I actually truly mean it. Maybe. When I say no, I mean no. When I say yes, I mean yes. There is no confusion, really, when I respond. And I always try to respond as quick as possible. Whenever somebody asks me, a question like that if they want to if they want me to do something i always respond as quick as possible because i feel like when you respond quicker at least in social interactions it shows the person i show the person that i that i'm paying attention to what this person is asking me or asking of me that i am locked in and i know what's happening there's a lot of people out there that for some reason, or okay, okay, you know what? Let me back it up a little bit. I reply as fast as I possibly can. Okay? Sometimes that might be longer than I expect to, longer than I want to, but for the most part, for the most part, I respond as quick as possible, as fast as I possibly can, which is usually about like five minutes with every question that I'm that I've ever been asked. You know, I usually try to respond fast as possible. But there's people out there, absolutely disgusting people, psychopaths, um, uh, just plagues to society that won't respond to questions via phone, via text message. And, and listen, we live in a day where, we live in a day and age where People my age and younger, right, even older, are on their phone constantly, just constantly on their phone. Like, there is no hiding away. There's no hiding it. There is no hiding it. There's unlimited data, unlimited 5G plus everywhere. The basic plans now have, like, unlimited 5G. There is Wi-Fi everywhere. Everybody has Wi-Fi in their home now. That is a standard way of living your phone is either on your pocket in your bag in purse backpack it's within like two feet of your of of your uh, of your body at all times nowadays it isn't in your car it isn't at your desk all right it's on you we live in a society where you need to be accessible at every second of the day. There is no excuse in 2024 why your phone is not on you or your you don't have your phone with you right now or your phone you don't have internet bullshit. I don't buy it. So when I get people that I ask a question or I say something to them or I want to know something, or ask you to come hang out, and you don't respond, then we got a big, big problem. Like a monumental problem. Like either your phone needs to be taken away forever, you lose phone privileges, or just say, say, or just respond. This happens a few times in my friend group, and it drives me up a wall. It's insane, it's crazy. I don't know. I don't understand. Like, I know, I know you. I know you very, very, very well. I've seen you. You're always on your phone, right? Don't tell me you didn't see it. You definitely saw it. 
Now, are you willing, are you man enough? Are you mature enough to act on it and to reply to me? That's the question. Lately, it's been no. It hasn't been that. It's been very, very strange. Very strange. There's some replies that I have sent out. There's there's some questions I've sent out to this person. Still haven't gotten any response. Not a response. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Not even a, an acknowledgement that, oh, hey, just so you know, yeah, or no. Like, nothing. Absolutely nothing. These people are sick. These people are actually disgusting. It's so strange to think that. It's so strange for a person to just not even acknowledge that you are being helmed, that you're being requested. You know, this isn't the Middle Ages. This isn't even the 1910s. I don't have to send you a letter to get your attention. I can bing, bang, boom on my phone, hit send, and there it is. Within the same second, within the same breath, my message is there. Whatever I want to send you, whatever I want to tell you, whatever I want to show you is there. Hell, I'm even sometimes faster because I have it on my watch. So I have double the alert and double the, the, double the resources and double the ways to respond. Or even just ask a question. Like, it's so easy nowadays for people to respond. The, the technology has evolved so far that humans can respond to one another faster than they ever have before in the history of our kind. And yet, there are still people out there that don't even respond to me. I don't understand. I truly don't get it. I think it's monumentally silly, strange, weird, uh, sometimes petty. There might be some more underlining things to this uh, type of behavior, but it's just strange. It's strange, and it's been happening a few times now, even in the new year, right? Fresh new year. New start, new me, new you, and then the lack of responses I get. Now, I'm not trying to be, you know, super petty about this. I'm really not. But I feel like I'm I'm being driven to the breaking point of what I am able to handle and what um, I'm able to tolerate when it comes to trying to communicate with my so-called friends and people whom I care about is is very strange. It doesn't really make any sense. I wish it did. I wish I could really dive in and tell you what I have been, what I have been or how I have not been responded to and how I have been at, at some points felt neglected and just I've been in the darkness No one's responding. Ding dong. No one's there. That's how I've been feeling sometimes. It's weird. It's very, very strange that that this behavior is allowed and continues to happen. Now, I've told these people's, um, other people that, that know them, you know, spouses, I've been like, hey, you better cancel this person's phone because this ain't this shit ain't going to fly. You know, this shit this shit better not be flying with you cuz it's flying with it's it should be flying with me. You know, cancel their phone, take away their phone, deactivate their service, cancel your Wi-Fi because this person cannot handle um basic um friendship and basic replying and basic uh communication via text or call. Nothing person should not be allowed in society if i if i'm being completely honest that type of behavior is not going to fly with me no sir no how if i one day have children right and then one day i decide to buy these children a device like a phone to communicate with me and i ask them a question i respond i i 
I expect responses within about five minutes. If not, I'm going to think that something's wrong. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to think that anything is wrong, you know, or they're just ignoring me. Like, that might actually be even worse than having something be actually wrong. Is somebody ignoring? There's nothing worse, I think, when someone is flat out ignoring you. That, to me, is not okay. I mean, I am talking to you. I am asking you a question. I'm trying to communicate with you. I want to know something. I want to ask you something. And you have the nerve. You have the nerve, the balls, to neglect me, to, to not respond. I'm looking at my watch. Still hasn't responded. It's been days. And I've been left on red for days before. It's happened a lot of times. I don't appreciate it. I truly don't appreciate it. It's kind of like, it's kind of, I, I feel like this is, that also might be a reason of why, well, maybe not a reason why, but I recently deleted Snapchat, and I think it was for the best, because that it was just another app where people could, could ignore me. People could just ignore me and not respond to me. You know, I, I that that too, that that service. I mean, I have sent Snapchats to people. This is years ago, right? And they hadn't opened it for weeks. You gotta think to yourself, like, what kind of person, what kind of psychopath who doesn't open the Snapchat that you sent them for weeks? I can see when you open the Snapchat. It was never opened. It's been years. It's been never opened. Couldn't believe it. I I was like, there's no way that this person is this dumb and this oblivious. When they previously Snapchatted me, and I think mine was a response to that Snapchat, and they don't even open the Snapchat? Some people are just unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. It's hard to think that these people exist, but they do. They do. I can't believe it. I want to move on to something that happened last week that I just kind of was like looking into it. Not a whole lot, if I'll be completely honest, but got my attention. Got my attention quite a bit. It happened apparently on New Year's Day, January 1st. But did you guys see what was happening, what was being covered in Miami, at that Miami mall? So if you guys haven't checked it out, you should check it out. Go on X, go on uh, TikTok, go on Instagram, go somewhere, but type in Miami mall, and you will see um, videos of people, what I what looks to be like 100 police officers um, in their cars pulling up to like this and blocking up this entire perimeter around the Miami Mall, because according to the police reports, according to the media, um, there was kids in the mall lighting fireworks, gangs of kids fighting, and stuff like that, and I think that there was, uh, you know, the, the people were running and screaming for their lives because they thought that the fireworks were gunshots, but, you know, that also, you know, is a type of thing that you would expect to happen, right? And, you know, it was reported that, you know, air quotes reported that the people were running for their lives because they thought that the fireworks were gunshots and that they were running like that because of the the gunshots that they thought they heard. Um, you know, it seems like an all, you know, type of thing that, you know, might happen, you know, a crazy thing that, you know, mis misunderstanding, and if it was actually some violence, you know, stuff like that, like the teenagers fighting with like, groups of teenagers just fighting each other in the mall would cause that kind of uproar and that kind of uh, uh, what it seemed to be like people running for their lives, right? That seems plausible, but there's this other theory out there that there was um, that there was aliens in the Miami mall. And described as like eight to ten foot beings, shadowy beings that would like 
disappear, teleport, reappear, and people lost their shit. And, and, and that is a theory of why there were so many police cars that blocked off the entire area of the mall. Like, pretty much like the entire block was blocked by police cars in Miami. The entire mall was blocked out. And there was there's like no video that's been released of the, the security cameras in the mall. Nobody on the inside took an, an, took or posted a video. I'm not too sure. But there's no video from the inside of the mall which is sketchy as shit because it makes no sense of like, if this was, you know, what the media is claiming, then why is there like not this many videos? And why are there no like eyewitnesses like being like, like being asked questions on the, on the news of like what actually happened? You know, if you watch the videos and you see how the way that these people are running away from the area, right? The mall, it sounds like they're, they were actually terrified. Like, 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 they were in their fight or flight mode. Like, this is, like, this doesn't seem like any, like, type of, like, day-to-day thing that you would experience, right, with a fight like this. This was something different. And as soon as I was, like, di- diving into it, like, going on X and really looking into it and, I, and, 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 and seeing, like, videos of people claiming that they're speaking out, I don't know necessarily if I believe those because... Anybody can make that up, you know, with the information that's been out there, with the theories that have been out there, and just kind of fabricate it and make it their own. But the way that the police blocked out that entire area, the amount of cars that were there, helicopters reported being seen, um, of course, the, you know, the, the, the on-foot reports of the, the 10-foot-tall aliens or the beings, you know, it definitely seems a little fishy. You know, apparently the power around that area also was shut off. The airport, I think, was not shut off, but the flights were grounded. Very, very strange. Um, If they knew what it was, what they're reporting, that it was teenagers fighting and lighting off fireworks, then I don't necessarily know, like, why it would prompt such a huge response from the Miami Police Department now, when I saw the videos and I saw how just how much police response was out there, and the rumor, the theory was also aliens, I'm thinking to myself like, shit, something from Area 51 broke out and the Miami PD is, is under direct orders from the White House to not let anything that has seen it repeat what they saw or see or say what they saw and got to make sure that no one and absolutely nobody goes into the videotape anything that's why they had all the police there you know to 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 induce fear that oh we ain't going in there we ain't going nearby anywhere we're going to run the fuck away because not only is it, is it because like you see these people in these videos running for their lives, right? They're terrified. It seems like they're so scared. Like they're like they're, you know, that they, they they just gotta get away. Like they're afraid that they're gonna die. Looks like, and then you get that aerial shot of all those police cars just coming in, right? That also induces a lot of fear. Now I don't know if you've been around or watched like, you know, a disaster movie. Or, you know, the beginnings of like a nat- like a big disaster or a big like thing that's just not good, right? There's always a gigantic response from like law enforcement, right? Like the police are just rolling through. That induces a fear. That induces a panic. And I think that when I saw the, all those police cars just whiz by, not I wasn't there, but in the videos, just whiz by the aerial, aerial shots of all the cars... That induced a fear in me. That induced a fear of like, oh shit, something is incredibly wrong. Like something is not supposed to be seen. Like they're they're trying to cover something up right now because whatever is out is out. And they gotta try to do damage control up the ass on this one because they might be in some big trouble. If whatever is out is seen. So they had like put everybody, you know, in, in the Miami police department area, just like go over there right now, because whatever's out there, it cannot be seen. And I've heard, I've heard 
that nobody has still reported on this. Nobody has, you know, is allowed to say what what even happened there. And I heard about this news like four days or five days after it actually happened. It happened on July, January 1st, and I think I heard about it on like January 4th or 5th. I can't remember, but I was like, ain't no way that we would that that this is coming out days later like first of all it was like a massive thing like this was like covering like an entire block almost in Miami this is like big news this is like big it's not like a small little thing it's gigantic and the response that it, it generated from like the uh the Miami police like how did this take so long to reach me days later it doesn't make any sense it's puzzling. It's just like the, the 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 series of events of how it even transpired. And now this like where did that theory even come from? If it was truly, truly, truly teenagers and groups of teenagers fighting with fireworks and sticks and causing a mass chaos. Sure, yeah, but why that then there's no reason for the the alien theory to even exist if that's what happened. Why would there even be a theory out there that it was aliens? How could that even be um, conceived if what it was was actually what it was? You know. Also, there's no no video of of anything in the mall been released. No no dash cam footage. No police reports. No witnesses, reports, nothing. Very strange. Extremely strange. So, where I'm at with this is that this is aliens. This is. This has to be. There's no re. I mean, the police said, like, you know, this is an exercise. This is, you know, we want to show that we are prepared for this stuff. Like, there is no reason why you are going to have that massive police rollout into the, the Miami Mall, that, that expensive-ass rollout of your entire police department, what it seemed to be, and for a group of teenagers, lighting fireworks, like, there, there, there's nothing, there, there's active shooters, there's, the, there's, you know, shootings that happen in this country that don't even generate a fraction of that type of response that that received, like, that's insane. I, I, I just, you never see that much response for, for what they claimed caused the response, you know? So I'm thinking it's aliens, man. I'm thinking it's aliens. I mean, I would hope it would be aliens. I mean, God damn it, you know, like, I want these motherfuckers to show themselves to me so badly that it's like, enough's enough. You know, you know, and the fact that, you know, they got the, the Miami Police Department blatantly lying about what they saw and not being able to talk about it, like, of course, of course it's aliens. Like, of course you can't talk about it because it's aliens. It's unbelievable. Like, you can only bullshit a person so hard, so far, you know, until they're like, yeah, you're full of shit. Like, like people like me live with people day to day. You know, different types of people, different types of bullshitters, and we all can detect a bullshitter, you know, and when you're telling bullshit and you're lying and you're not being truthful, it's so easy to pick up. It's so easy to to know, to figure out when something is not right, to figure out when it's like, oh, hello, look at this, poking some holes in your story there, you know, it, it's it's so easy to do nowadays. It's so easy to tell when people are lying about anything, you know, it's so, so, like, when I hear, like, this bullshit, like, we don't have camera footage, or, or, or they're not releasing the footage yet, it's like, why, why, you know, we honestly want to know what's going on, but you can't tell us, you know what it is, though, it's more than just, um, it's more than just lying, it's more than just being honest, right? It's more than just telling the truth to someone about an event. It's more than that. It's more than, you know, giving people information. It's more than telling you what actually happened. It's way, way, much, much more than that. 
you guys remember hearing the uh, phrase when you were a kid, maybe when you were like a teenager, maybe going into college or graduating high school, whatever. Do you remember the phrase, knowledge is power? Well, that's never been truer, never been more of a truer statement than it is today. Knowledge is power has never been truer than today. Because knowledge is not only give you power. You know, I mean, it, it does give you power, but, you know, people can use it in different ways. One man's knowledge is another man's ignorance. And that's the strength, right? Your ignorance is their strength. What you don't know is whoever's hiding the truth is strength and their advantage. Advantage. It's um it's a scary thing to think about, you know, when you know, let's say that, you know, these were aliens, right? They were. You know, they they, they got out, you know, the government let them escape. And they, they, the government knows, right? They know that these things have been around for a while. They know that our universe and our whole understanding of the universe and our whole understanding of our place in the universe is can be easily, you know, completely shattered with a view of an alien. And they don't want that. They want you to continue to go to work, to shut up, Essentially, they want you to shut up and dribble and not know anything about the world, about your place in it, about the planet, the solar system, the galaxies, the universe, anything that could be out there. They just want you to shut up and dribble and dribble on the earth, in your country, in your state, in your city, in your neighborhood, in your on your street. Shut up. And that's it. That is you, and that is all you are entitled to. Now, the people, let's say the people in the government, right? Area 51, Area S4, Los Alamos, the people that are potentially, you know, uh, uh, working on alien tech, they're probably thinking to themselves like, yeah, we can't let anybody know about this. We can't let anybody know about any of this. And they'll probably tell you that, you know, we can't let anybody know because if we let you know, that that means our enemies could know too, which is a viable strategy. I, I, I can see why that would um, be a, 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 a response to not telling us where the aliens are, if there are any aliens, if we have any UFOs or any type of spacecraft that has not been from Earth or made by humans, sure. That, that's a good, I think it's a good reason, right? But then you go this long and then you think that, you know, people are much more observant. They're much more toned in, tuned in, finely tuned in to tune out the bullshit. And it continues to happen, right? But also, who's the person that has the idea in the first place to keep this kind of information to themselves and keep it as their, you know, their strength and then your ignorance. Who who is who has that that mindset way back then to just say like, yeah, we can't let anybody know about this. We gotta pe- keep people thinking that this is how they live their lives and this is it. This is all. Who is that? Who is who are these people that 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 are like you know, um, like they they know how the world works and they know all the secrets of the world. And they're like, if we let anybody know about this and the world collapses, like, who are those people? And how do they know that they know that that's going to happen? Who, like, they're just like me and you, right? Like, like back then when, when, when Roswell happened, like, who was the guy to cover it up and say, no, it was this? How did he even have that idea? Why did he have that idea to have that, to, 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 to hide all that stuff and to, to make people think that they were crazy? Like, what is the, is it just because you, you have more power and they knew that back then? Or were they actually trying to save, like, you know, save face or just, like, and it kind of morphed into that? I don't know. 
Like who has that that um uh, that that in their mind to like keep things away from people's attention and their and to keep them in the in the in the keep them in limbo on certain subjects. I don't know. It's weird to think about. You know, knowledge is power. One man's knowledge is another man's ignorance. Hundred percent. I think it's hard. I think it's really, really, really hard to like think about like who's in command and who's in charge and how much they know compared to you or I, like we don't know anything about, you know, we don't know the facts about, um, what really happened in Roswell. We don't know the facts about what happened in, in Miami last week. We have no idea. Will we ever know? Probably never. They'll probably just wait for us to, uh, forget about it and then just move on to the next one. I feel like that's what's, you know, that's what's happening. You know how, they say that they they release like news and stuff when they and while other things are happening to get your mind off certain things that kind of happened right there was like a whole you know thing about Jeffrey Epstein his uh um people that you know went on his plane and then then this whole thing happened and then it was just like whoa uh, what happened to Jeffrey Epstein i don't know i have no idea but, you know, maybe it was that. Maybe it was just a big, massive cover-up. But but again, back to the point, why was that even a theory? Why were the aliens in the Miami Mall even a theory? Why? What, who planted that? Was it an actual person? Was it a troll? Was it a troll bot? Like, was it like a terrorist? Like a, like a, like a like a cyber terrorist to 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 in, to inject like a like a narrative into our mind so we can like so let's say this right what if the person who thought of the alien theory is someone who's trying to hijack the way that we perceive things in the country and how with how they're covered right the fact that that there's people that think that what happened was aliens and I'm one of them is because that there is a a theory that was generated by I don't know who or what who did it but it was and you know to to completely turn us on you know what's being covered and what's being shown by the mainstream media now whether the mainstream media is true all the time or not is a different conversation, but at this moment in time, there is a distrust, there is a skepticism when it comes to this particular story. Like, of course, you know, it could have been, you know, kids causing chaos of fireworks and beating up people, right? But then again, that response from that Miami Police Department, the entire goddamn squadron just pulling up, the entire company... The entire battalion. I mean, like, hmm. And then, and then all the information's not out there yet, so it's even more confusing. It's like they're doing it. We're also doing it. Our our brains are doing it. We're overthinking things. It's an entire mess. It's a complete mess. The more you think about it, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know what's true anymore. It could be my fault, but it could be also the people who are in charge. The people who have the facts and don't want to say what actually happened. I mean, I've been on X for a while. I've been scrolling X since it first, you know, was brought to my attention. Like, what is this? What is going on? What happened? I haven't been able to find an answer. I have not been able to find an answer at all. Don't know. I can't go on X because I just see fake shit now. Fake shit of like footage of the aliens and same old videos that I've already seen. And then people claiming they're talking to somebody who actually was a police officer at the Miami incident. I can't, I don't know if I can believe that either. It's like, I, I mean, like, what is real? What is fake? You know? Like I said before, one man's knowledge is another man's ignorance. Knowledge is power. Anyways, moving on. Moving on to some college football. A little bit of college football talk now. Um, the national championship game was played on Monday this past week with the Michigan Wolverines beating the Washington Huskies 
to cr- be crowned college football national champions of the country. Congratulations. I was watching most of that game. And as a person from the West Coast, I was rooting for Washington because, well, for one, the Pac-12 is going to be dead after this season. Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA are all moving to um, the Big Ten. So I guess you could say the, the, the Big Ten are the champions of the world. You know, even though Michigan did win, having Washington going to be moving there next year, if they won, it would have still been the Big Ten. Um, But then again, you know, like I said, Michigan won pretty handily. Wasn't the greatest game that I've ever seen. Pretty, It was sort of entertaining in the first half. Michigan was playing such hard defense. Um, Washington looked pretty disappointing. Michael Penix Jr., the quarterback of Washington, was not playing very well at all. And he had played pretty damn amazing the entire college football season. Like He was probably the best quarterback um, this year in college football. Even better than I think that I think than Caleb Williams. Like, I mean, the dude just was able to put the ball into his receiver's hands. I mean, you saw it in the game before, in prior against Texas. The dude was electric. He could just sling the ball. Anywhere in the pocket, you know, and he was great. He he played amazing, and he was playing like that the entire year. But this game, man, for whatever reason, it might have been nerves, it might have been, you know, actually Michigan playing some really, really good defense. He was not himself. I mean, he sucked. He was playing terrible in this game. He was overthrowing balls left and right. I mean, I was getting frustrated. I'm not even a Washington fan, but I was getting frustrated because he had so many receivers open, or at least somewhat open, to to, to get a first down, you know, move the chains. But he couldn't hit him for the life of him. I mean, I didn't I didn't see the box score, but I was but I the final box score, but his completions were just down for real, like really down. He never looked comfortable the entire game. I think he threw like maybe two or three interceptions. Um, like I said, overthrew so many receivers. The receivers also dropped the ball a few times. That's what happens when you get frustrated, you know. But um, truly a, um, a truly a bad performance. You know, probably dropped his draft stock uh, quite a bit. I would I would say. I mean, even though there's not that too many too many quarterbacks are going to be going to be coming out in this uh next year's draft or this year's draft but um just not a very good performance and it was a shame because he was lighting up college football this season and he was kind of like a you know a, a breakout i mean he wasn't really expected to at least for me to you know to do all that well but he was doing it i mean he was playing so well he was nominated for the Heisman this year and um to, it was just so he was so unrecognizable in that game. I was just so I I couldn't I I didn't know who I who I was watching. I was like, nah, this can't be this can't be uh, Michael Penix. And, and Michael Penix was like a really good quarterback, like probably like the best one in the year. And it's like it, Michigan didn't care. They didn't care. They played good defense. JJ McCarthy made plays when he had to. Blake Corum was really good, um, and but I gotta say, man, I, Michael Penix had a lot of chances. Like, shout out to freaking Washington's defense. I mean, as as bad as the offense played, the defense was giving them chance after chance after chance. And there was a lot of time where they were like one score away, and they couldn't do a damn thing. Not a damn thing in that second half. They couldn't do anything. And I was I was actually getting frustrated too because there would be times where like the 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 Washington defense was making plays on the Michigan offense I'm like okay so like Washington defense is awake they're playing for real they they want to win this game and their offense the Washington offense was just bad i mean unrecognizably bad like just like what the hell happened to you guys man i don't want to say it was nerves because these dudes play in games, you know, big games all the time. Like, this can't be nerves. It had to have been like an out of sync, an out of rhythm type thing where maybe they just game planned it completely wrong. They tried to do some new stuff and they just couldn't get out of it, you know? 
Um, but you know, congrats to Michigan. I'm mean, I'm happy that Washington made it because, you know, they were talked about as a pretty good team throughout the entire year, but they were really special this year. Um, it was just sad that they couldn't um, capitalize on winning the entire national championship. Wouldn't it have been crazy though if a school from the Pac-12 that's going to be in the Big Ten next year won it? In the in the last year of the Pac-12 being a good conference in college football, that would have been sick. That would have been cool, you know. Even though they would have been the Big Ten next year, which they are going to be, it would have been cool. I mean, I guess this year, this year, 2024, um, uh, Washington is technically in already gonna already in the Big Ten. Sad, but you know that's just the way it is, I guess. Um. Coach Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, won a championship finally. Um, not to say that he needed to win one to solidify himself, at least in my opinion, as a great coach. I mean, he's always had, you know, good culture, good players at Michigan, at the San Francisco 49ers, at Stanford. Uh, he's a good coach. The dude is a leader of men. Like he can he can get guys to play to where they need to be to, to, you know, raise the stakes, to raise their expectations, and to play good football. Like, there's no doubt about it. Like, Jim Harbaugh is a really, really good coach. Like, there's no doubt whatsoever. And the fact that, you know, college football fans probably either like him or they don't like him, but, um, you know, I think that he's good for college football. I think he's good for football in general because he brings a personality a winning mentality, a work ethic that I think that is so desperate in um, American youth. And what a better place to have it than in college football, right? You don't really get much American youth in that. Um, at least when we you know when 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 college students are like they're at their, you know, their growing period of becoming, you know, men. Now, not all these not all these kids are going to make it into the NFL, but at least they had a good coach that is able to shape them into hopefully men that will be, you know, uh, able to join the workspace or workforce and, you know, have a winning mentality and a good work ethic, you know. That's what we can always hope for, you know, in that situation. And you know what? It's about time that dude won one because he's been trying for years um, with Michigan to to try to win the big one. He's gone there pretty close the past two years, like I think in the semifinals every in the past two years and never really gotten there. Um, so it's cool to see that he um, he made it to uh, he, he, he got all the way to the uh, and won the national championship. It's really cool to see. It's good for college football, I think. It, it was it was in, it was. I was just happy that it wasn't like an SEC school, right? I was so happy it wasn't Alabama and it wasn't Georgia because past two years have been Georgia. Alabama, I think, was knocking on the door the year before that. You know, just SEC majority of the the past few championships have been SEC. And it's like, it's good to see, you know, um, another school win one. It was nice to see. Moving on, though, to the NFL playoffs. Super wild card Saturday this weekend. Um, we're going to be talking about the games that are coming up. I mean, these are some great playoff games, man. These are incredible playoff games that we're going to talk about right now. Let's break it down. So the the teams that have made it in, in that are in the NFL playoffs for the 2024 NFL playoffs, for the AFC, we have the Baltimore Ravens. We have... The Miami Dolphins, the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs, Pittsburgh Steelers, Cleveland Browns, and Houston Texans in the AFC. In the NFC, we have the San Francisco 49ers, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Green Bay Packers, Dallas Cowboys, the Detroit Lions, Los Angeles Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the playoffs for the NFC. I mean, some pretty good teams right there. I mean, we can't, you know, as much as I like to make fun of um, the Dolphins for not being a real ass team, 
or how much I despise the way the the Steelers play football, such such boring ass football. You gotta respect the teams that made it, right? They made it. They they were able to gut it out and and make it to the to the playoffs. So let's look at the matchups this weekend. Saturday we have the Cleveland Browns versus the um, Houston Texans. Joe Flacco versus C.J. Stroud. Man, what, what, already a juicy, juicy matchups already. Like this is going to be a great weekend. Um, none of these two teams to me are flukers. They're not flukes. These are the real deal, deal teams that really, really, really want to win. weren't expecting them to win though. That I think this fast. You know, Houston for sure not. Cleveland a little bit. You know, Houston no. This was going to be like a a a. a a rebuilding, a refresh, restart year, you know, CJ Stroud, new quarterback, rookie quarterback, D'Amico Ryan's new head coach, rookie head coach. Um, this is going to be an interesting game, man. I honestly, I mean, I want the Texans to win because seeing how well CJ Stroud is playing is just so much fun to see. It's so cool because he's such a good quarterback right now. He's playing so good. He's so awesome to watch. He's so calm in the pocket. He is like the most, like one of the most mature rookie quarterbacks that I've seen in the league since Andrew Luck, possibly. Pocket presence, ability to to sling that ball down the field and get get good plays and, you know, be accurate with the football. Like this dude is like got it all. And then Joe Flacco, the comeback story, you know, signing with the Browns, you know, when they needed a quarterback and how good he's been playing. It's been awesome to watch, man. But this game, I'm going to go with the, I want the, I want the Houston Texans to win. As much as I like Joe Flacco, I think that it'd be great for the league to see CJ Stroud get further and, and really like, you know, show the world like, Hey, yo, I'm, I'm the real deal. Next game, um, Dolphins, Chiefs, both teams, I think, that are not really where they want to be record-wise. I think that both teams think that they can be a lot better. Uh, the Chiefs, to me, have looked a lot very weak this year, very vulnerable. Um, the Dolphins are vulnerable just because they don't have a lot of their players playing. We saw that last weekend. They didn't have Jalen Waddell. They didn't have Raheem Mostert. Both uh, Pro Bowl-type players that really add to that team's chemistry, that ke- that team's speed. And I think that when you have those guys along with uh, um, Tyreek Hill, Devon A. Chain, you're going to get just a, the, the team's going to come back and they're going to be faster than ever. So for this game, I'm going to go with uh, the guy with the weapons. I'm going to go with, um, you know, the Miami Dolphins. I think that Miami's got more weapons and that they're much more talented than Kansas City at the moment. Kansas City has a better quarterback, but if you don't have the weapons, then I think it's a little bit tougher to win. Especially, and well, I mean, like, they're going to get the advantage. They're going to be in the cold. Miami does not play well in the cold. But I think when you have, you know, Tyreek, who's played in Kansas City before, knows it's cold, has played well in the cold, that he's going to be like, you know what, guys, we just got to run fast. We run fast, we get hot, we'll win the game. So I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins in that game. Uh, Next game, Steelers versus Bills. I truly think that because the Steelers are a little shaky at the quarterback, that this is a perfect opportunity for the Buffalo Bills to get a, a good playoff win. The Steelers won't be an easy test. Don't get me wrong. They won't be easy. But the fact that the 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 the, the uh, Bills have still one of the better quarterbacks in the league um in Josh Allen and uh the Steelers will be with uh, I believe Mason Rudolph I'm going to go with the Bills just because of the sheer quarterback the the, the just a better quarterback on their team I know that the Bill, the Steelers won't have TJ Watt it seems like um they'll have Mason Rudolph and um, I just feel like the Bills have more weapons. You know, this is going to be like a weapon match off, and I think that the Bills just have more than the Steelers, and that's that's just that's why I'm going with the Bills for that game. Um, Packers versus the Cowboys. 
this is another one where it's like, who's got the more weapons? I'm going with Dallas, but the way Matt LaFleur has Green Bay playing is scary. Like they are had the, they've been playing so well these past few weeks. Even though like after I had written them off, like after like week five, like these dudes suck. They're terrible. Um, don't expect them to see them anywhere near the playoffs. It's gonna be uh, I was gonna it's gonna be like Detroit and Minnesota. But no, Green Bay is just right there back in the playoffs, playing Dallas yet again. Again, Dallas has the weapons, but Green Bay has got the coaching, and I think that that Green Bay's coaching has got these boys playing at the Cowboys level. And if you got that coaching behind you, I think the Cowboys are gonna are in for it. I think that the Cowboys are gonna be in for it in this game. And normally, I would pick the coaching over the players, but I think that the players on on the Cowboys know that they need to get farther than one game in the playoffs than the wild card, right? So, and Mike McCarthy apparently is going to be coaching for his job. So he's got to make a deep run to keep his job as the Dallas Cowboys head coach. So as much as I want to pick Green Bay, I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys because I think that they they feel like they need to win this game. It is a necessity. They, they it, This is a cannot lose for the Dallas Cowboys. This is a can't lose for Mike McCarthy. They cannot lose this game. Green Bay Packers, of course, they don't want to lose either, but no one was expecting them to even make it this far or even be this good down the stretch. So this is kind of like a, a nice treat, right? This is a almost going to be like a, you know, a Super Bowl for both of these teams. Like they need to win th- these games. But I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys. I think they're going to win. Moving on. Rams versus Lions. Man, this 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 game's going to kill Matthew Stafford, man. Matthew Stafford returning to Detroit after he was traded back in 2018, I think, 2019. I think, I can't remember, but playing the Lions in Detroit, man, like, the emotions that this man's going to be having on that day from this game, like, he's he's probably going to be sobbing this entire game. He's got to go in there and beat the team that he, that drafted him and beat the quarterback, Jared Goff, that the Rams traded to get Stafford to the Lions. Jared Goff, and this is going to be just an emotional game for everybody. Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, Sean McVay. Oh, man. Like, at one point, Jared Goff was Sean McVay's quarterback. Like, he, that was his guy. They were, they were boys. And, whew, this is going to be tough, man. But, you know, I think that the Rams... As good as a, as as good as the the Lions have been, they haven't looked as good as they have in that as they had in the in the beginning of the regular season, and the Rams have looked the opposite. They've looked incredible these fat these past few games, uh, um, before the playoffs. The Rams are playing like they really want it, pretty in a, like a desperate win 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 mode, and. I'm gonna go with the Rams just because I'm a Rams fan. I think that they want it more. Like I feel like that they they know they had that they have no room for error. So do the Lions, but they're coming like into it as an underdog. I think. And I think when you have Matthew Stafford and the Rams as an underdog, it's not gonna be. It's not a good thing to have them at that at that uh, rank. So I'm gonna go with the Rams over the Lions in this game. And that brings us to the final game of Super Wild Card Weekend. Philadelphia Eagles versus uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, as much as I want to say that the Eagles win easily, because I think that they're such a better team, talent-wise, than the Buccaneers, these Eagles almost seems like they can't play together right now. Like, they don't seem to have any type of connection with each other on this team. It's pretty sad the way that they've imploded. I mean, they lost to the Giants pretty badly these past few weeks, twice, and to the Cardinals. They lost five out of their last six games. It's been it's been quite the the, the downward spiral spiral for this team. Like they were in the Super Bowl last year, and now they're just spiraling out of control to the ground. It it, it seems like it's over for these guys. Um. So I'm going to go on a limb here. 
I'm going go on a limb. I don't think that Philadelphia can repair itself. They have not been able to repair themselves within these past six games. They cannot. There's no sign that they can do it in this upcoming game um, against Tampa Bay. Right? I just don't see it happening. And it's going to be in Tampa. Like, huh. <sighs> um, I don't see it happening. I don't see any way that this team can repair itself from the damage that they've already received from this year and just magically get better. So I might be stupid. I might be crazy. I'm going with the upset. I'm going to go Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't see them getting any better. I truly don't. I think that they might be broken from the inside. Quarterback, receivers, coach, disconnect, not on the same page. Just not good. Just trying to force it. Just just trying to force their old season onto the new season. And it's just not working. It hasn't really worked the entire year. They were seem very, very fake when they were like 10-1. I think they, they were. Um, and then they just lost so many games after that. It's just like, I don't think that they, they, they cannot reclaim, regain that swagger and that confidence that they had last year. And I don't think that they can get it in Tampa Bay. So, yes, going with the Buccaneers over the Eagles. And that's going to be it for me today. People, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can listen and listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube at Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. New episodes drop every Thursday morning. Make sure to like, subscribe, rate, review, and do all that good stuff. And, yes, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next week.